Come here this morning to praise God. Uh, let's remember why we praise Him. Uh, Deuteronomy ten twenty one tells us, "He is thy praise, and He is thy God, that hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen." First, we we can praise Him because of the wonders He's done in our lives, because of the blessings He's given us. But also, we should praise Him because He's our God. As, as Deuteronomy says, He is our praise. And He doesn't want fake praise. He doesn't want a uh, show. He doesn't want us going through the motions. Uh, 1 Samuel 15, 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. God doesn't want us going through the motions. He doesn't want us uh, praising him because we feel we have to. What he wants is, is real, authentic worship from us. Uh, real praise, it's not singing in a pew. It's, it's meaning what we sing to God. It's, it's lifting praise to him and, and it's obeying him. And so as, as we join together to praise today, let's just remember that, that real praise is that. Real praise is obeying God. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for the privilege that we get to praise you. God, for the privilege that we get to call you our God. Lord, I pray that, that we all would remember that, that we would all lift up honest, authentic prayer to you today, and that you would fill us with your spirit this hour. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Amen. I choose to worship. I choose to praise. You know, sometimes we have to choose. And sometimes we're provoked to praise. Amen. And uh, this week I was, we got great news about Jessica Slater. And there's still a couple doctor's appointments and there might be a treatment to have. But the doctor said, I'll be shocked if it's cancer. And we praise the Lord for that. I was talking to Josh uh, the other night and he says, I couldn't help but sing all the way home. And so we're provoked to worship sometimes. But then there's times we choose to worship. We had a real good visit last night with Daniel and Carla up at the hospital. And uh, he, had, he had five, six real bad days, real bad days. And uh, calling family in at times. And, and uh, we're so thankful they began to turn a corner on Friday morning and started doing a little bit better. And yesterday we had a good visit with him. He was greatly encouraged. He wanted me to thank everybody that came to the little rally they had for him. And, uh, you know, one of the things that he said to me and Carla is that, Every day we sit together and we talk and we say, what can we thank God for through in this? And so sometimes we choose to worship. And uh, you know, the Bible doesn't say for everything give thanks. It says in everything give thanks. We're not thankful for cancer, but in those situations, we can still find things to thank God for, to praise him for. And he says, I just see the hand of God in every step of the way, how God has manufactured everything uh, for his good, even though he's in the midst of a battle. So let's continue to pray for these folks and, and others like them. We'll share more requests at the end of the service. But I just thought it was so interesting, that song, I choose to worship doesn't matter what we're going through, we can choose to worship God and we can praise him today. So let me encourage you, while we sing these songs of praise today, think of something you are thankful for and what you can praise God for. Let's stand and sing this morning. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. I pass my
Psalm chapter 119, verse 81 says, My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. Mine eyes fail for thy word, saying, When wilt thou comfort me? For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not forget thy statutes. Don't let your time of waiting on the Lord leave you feeling forgotten and useless like the millions of discarded water bottles found along our nation's highway. Back in 2013, a Vancouver resident, Andy Sward, made it his life work to pick up discarded trash along our nation's highway. His desire was to walk across Canada. And he started in British Columbia, and it wasn't very long before he realized all of this discarded trash along the highway. And he said, I'm going to take it upon myself to pick it up. And he made an, a kind of a challenge to himself. He says, I am going to pick up for the next 20 years, endeavor to pick up one million water bottles. Up to this point, now he's picked up 100,000 water bottles as he's crossed the Canada walking. You know, God, waiting on God, David said that when he was waiting for God to deliver or God to answer prayer, he felt like he had been abandoned. He felt like he was useless. He felt like a bottle that had been discarded along the highway. But you know what David said? During those times of waiting, I have learned to go to the Word of God and to be encouraged. You know, when we're waiting on God, it's not a time just to wait, but it's a time to grow. And when we're waiting, let's go to the Word of God and let's find comfort, let's find strength, let's find encouragement, and it can be a time of great growth in our spiritual life. You know, maybe you're here today and you're not saved and you may feel like you've been abandoned. You know, it's sad in this world, people that are unlovable, people that are thought to be useless, even when they figure that you have no purpose, they just seem to abandon you. But I want to tell you here this morning, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, our God, is in the recycling business. And he's ready to reach down and touch your life. He died on the cross for your sins. And he doesn't want you to feel abandoned. He wants to, he, the Bible says, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Reach out to him and know life today. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our dear God and heavenly father, we are so thankful that we have a saving God that he doesn't abandon us. He doesn't leave us, but he's there always. Father, we pray that you would bless our service today. Maybe there's one here that's not saved. I pray they'd come to know Christ as their Savior. And Lord, we pray that we think about those who've given today, those who have given of themselves and worship and offering. Lord, we pray that you'd bless that and use it for thy purpose. Bless the service, bless the preaching of the word of God this morning. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to teach you a new hymn this morning. And so let's just remain seated for a moment. We're going to sing it together up here. And then we'll have you stand and join us once you've heard the tune. Come, people of the risen King.
That's not that hard. Let's stand this morning. Let's sing this hymn together. Rejoice, rejoice. Let's sing on the first verse. Come, people of the risen King, who delight to bring Him praise. Come all and tune your hearts to sing to the morning star of grace. From the shifting shadows of the earth, we will lift our eyes to Him. Where stand?
dismiss our boys and girls to the junior church. Lord, we love you, God. We do thank you that we can uh, bring boys and girls in um, and preach the gospel to them. I pray that you'd be with the, the junior church workers, that you'd give them patience, that you'd give them uh, a love uh, for these children. God, help us to, to see them how you see them as souls that uh, need to hear the gospel. I pray as your word is open that the Holy Spirit would speak to their hearts uh, and that we'd be able to see someone saved today. We just ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Children, you are dismissed. Amen. All right, young people, enjoy Junior Church. And let's take our Bibles this morning, please. And I'm just going to direct you for a moment to James chapter 5. Look in James chapter 5 with me this morning. And um, the Lord's just laid this on my heart. It's not my sermon, but we'll get to my sermon prayerfully, and we'll see how the Lord leads. Let me mention, just as you're turning there, and I don't like to do announcements during the service, but I'm not sure how the service might end today. So I just want to remind you that tonight after... Our evening service, we have a short business meeting. It's just our budget meeting. It's very quick. And then we're having the Chili Supper fundraiser for the Academy. I hope you can come to that. All the chili's ready, so I hope you come. And we'll warm it up all this afternoon, cook it. And so I hope you can be there tonight. It's just by donation, whatever you can give. And uh, that'll be a blessing to the young people for their senior class trip. All right, James chapter 5. James chapter 5. I just want to give you a couple points to remember this morning as we seemingly we've been in the middle of praying for a lot of things and it's important that we do that and uh, I think it's uh, from time to time uh, uh, let, let me put it this way and I, I don't mean to I don't make, mean to make light of anybody's situation when I say this so please understand my heart every once in a while affliction is good for the church affliction is good for the believer because it drives us back to our knees. It renews relationship with God. And that's so, so vitally important. And uh, the Lord draws near during those times of infliction, but we must also draw near to him. Isn't that what the Bible says? Draw near to God and he shall draw nigh to you. And it's during those times of affliction. Sometimes when things are going well, we don't turn to God like we ought to. And so times of affliction really do help us, uh, even though we can't always see it. And uh, I'm reminded of an old song, uh, when I cannot trace his hand, know his heart. God is working all things together for good. When we can't necessarily see what's happening or know his plan, we can trust his heart. That God is working things together for our good, to them that love him. And so I want to remind you of a few prayer requests this morning and read some scripture. Let's continue to pray for Daniel, of course, in the hospital. And uh, got a little bit of an update last night. And so uh, you say, well, is this preaching? It kind of is. You know, to bear the burdens of one another is a biblical precept. We ought to do that. And so to employ some illustration into our preaching this morning, I think is important. And so Daniel was sharing with me a little bit how his treatment was different than they first planned. And when they first planned, when we first heard it here at the church, it was going to be 28 days of five days of chemo and two days off, five days on, two days off for four weeks. But he said last night, they, before they started, they decided that uh, he was 35 years old, he's young, he's strong, uh, he has a good muscle mass. And he said, because of that, the doctor said, why don't we, if we can, and it was his decision, we will blast you with everything we got in five days. He says, we think your body can handle it. He says, you'll be miserable for 10 or 12 days after that. But he says, let's, let's blast it real good right now. And so he says, I said, let's do it. So he says, that's why I was so sick after the first round. And he says, so the prayer is, and this will help you pray, and uh, I, I may not get every deal, detail right, Kevin. I know that you probably know more than I, but I'm trying to just share with the church so they understand. And, and so the prayer, he's hoping that he might be able to go directly from this after 28 days, or 20 days, is it? 20 days from day one, right into stem cell. And so that would avoid a second round right now. Now, he'll need more chemo down the road, perhaps. But right now, that's the prayer. So can you pray that way? First, that a, a donor would be found. And, and I know the boys have all been checked out. And, and uh, you're waiting on results for some of these. And so let's pray for that and then pray for 
uh, the stem cell to, to take right away, and, and he might get to come home for, he said, maybe three days. I might get to come home for three days before the stem cell, so pray for that, and pray for uh, Carla and the kids, and it's been, it's been great to see uh, Daniel and Carla, especially their faith, just grow through all this, and, and uh, how they're just consciously trying to praise the Lord for everything that they see and know, and uh, greatly encouraged yesterday, almost overwhelmed by so many people that came, and so uh, again, thank you from them. So let's continue to pray for that. And then uh, we, we praise the Lord for Jessica. Now, there's still some things that have to happen, right? You still got to see a doctor, still need an MRI. And there might be some treatment, but we praise the Lord that they do not believe there's cancer. And so, we, 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 listen, if we're going to pray for something, we ought to praise as well when we get good news. And so let's praise, and we praise them in our trials, but we'll praise them when we come through those trials as well. Let's continue to pray for her. I'll pray for uh, Linda. Uh, Linda McCall, waiting on an MRI and just, you know, her body getting worse each day. And just pray that they'll get that MRI taken care of real, real soon. All right. They need that. Continue to pray for Joanne. Um, she's still waiting on some treatment coming up and uh, feeling pretty good right now. Is that right? And uh, so, but continue to pray for her as she's waiting on some treatment for cancer as well. And then Jimmy Roberts, of course, we haven't seen him in a few weeks and, and, and struggling with an infection. So let's remember him and pray for him. And then, uh, Amy, you were due yesterday. Is that right? And so let's continue to pray for you any day now. And so if you see them run out in the middle of the service, and uh, I'm, I'm just going to take it personally that it wasn't because of a boring sermon. Amen? And so but you pray for them. And uh, that's uh, first grandchild, Andre. So excited about that, and so let's, uh, let's pray for them as uh, any day now. I texted Mike yesterday, I said, hey, today's the day, and he says, yep, any day now, Pastor, just, just pray for us, and so, are you nervous, Mike? You don't know? You will be, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> all right. So let's, let's pray for all these things today, and let's remember, and there's others I know, uh, these are the ones that are just kind of pressing on us all the time right now, and you know, when I first came here over 13 years ago now, uh, we were reminiscing in the first three months I was here, we had seven funerals. And that was a time of affliction for our church. It just seemed like some of the ones, and the hard part, and I, I don't mean to make it about me, the hard part was they were all my old Sunday school teachers. You know, and that's, that's the nature of a church this old. You start folks that, were, that taught you Sunday school, then you, you lay them to rest and preach their funerals and such. And so, but that was a hard time for our church. And during, I remember during that time of affliction, our church drawn closer to the Lord. And it's, it's important that we go through that from time to time. And, and uh, it's good for the church. We sure don't like it but it draws us closer to him. And so let me read a couple of scriptures for you this morning, and then we're going to spend some time a little bit, and we'll pray together. Here's what the Bible says, James chapter 5, verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Let's just stop there for a moment. Let me preach a little bit as we go. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. The next verse says, is any sick among you? I draw that out for a comparison this morning. The word afflicted is a very general term. Sick is a more specific term, isn't it? We all know what it means to be sick. We, we've seen sickness go through our church, and, and not to the degree that some are suffering today, but the word afflicted is more of a general term. It means any type of affliction, anything that comes our way. It might be persecution. It might be external things from outside the church that are afflicting the church. When the Bible says, is any afflicted among you, I, I have to believe he's talking about the church when he says among you. A group of called out believers, the brethren that are gathered together, and we can look around this room today and we can make this application very simply, couldn't we? Is there anybody afflicted among us? That's what he's asking. That's the question that is posed today. We are to look upon the brethren and say, is there anybody that's afflicted? We're to pray. That is our calling. We are to fall upon our face before a holy God. We are to go boldly into the throne room of grace and ask for mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. What a wonderful privilege we have. We talk about the great physician. He's sitting at the right hand of Father in the Holy of Holies, and you can go to him boldly because of the work of Calvary. 
Because the veil of partition was rent in twain that we can go boldly to the Father because of what Christ did. He paid the price and he reconciled us to God. And that, all of that, we, we think about prayer. Well, hey, I get to talk to God. No, you have to understand what it means for us to pray. It meant that Christ died for us to go into the Holy of Holies. It meant that his body was tortured and his blood was shed that, the, that we might be reconciled to God, that we don't have to go to a priest. Uh, but that is a wicked doctrine of men. That is a holdover from a time long forgotten. There is one man, Christ Jesus. He is our great high priest. And we go to God the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ, because of this wonderful privilege afforded us because of the cross of Calvary. I'm so thankful today that we can just bow our head at any moment and we can pray. And there are times, there are times where every one of us in this room understand what affliction is. It may not be to a great degree, but we sense it and we feel it and we know it. And in those moments, we can go to God with our pain. The Bible says, casting all our cares upon him. And here's the great news, for he careth for you. Don't ever think for a moment that God gets tired of your asking. Don't think for a moment that God is indifferent to your prayers. Sometimes we pray and we pray and we pray and we say, does God even hear me or is God answering my prayers? Does he know what I need? Listen, God knows what you need better than you do. For we know not how we ought to pray, but the Spirit searcheth our hearts and maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. God speaks for us. And he sits at the right hand of the Father and he makes intercession for us. Oh, even when we forget to pray, he prays. So is any man... Any among you afflicted, let him pray. Look at the next part of that verse. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Well, we ought to praise when we're joyful. I think we ought to praise when we're not joyful. Uh, you, you remember those old bumper stickers, praise God anyhow. We ought to praise him all the time. In everything give thanks. Thanks. But the Bible here implores us and specifically challenges us today that when we are merry, we ought to sing psalms, we ought to praise. And here's, here's why I believe those two things are put in the same verse. A lot of times when we are afflicted, we pray. But how many times when we're joyful do we remember to praise? It's easy to come to church on Sunday and the music starts playing and and uh, I don't know if you heard before the service, uh, you might have heard that choir song playing on the piano, Praise the King. And then they played All the Praise. And you might say, I, I remember that song, the choir singing. I remember the ensemble singing All the Praise. And, and, and it starts to set our hearts towards praise. And then we sing, oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. And the choir sings these songs and our hearts are lifted. But let me ask you, just during the day or during your work week, when you're merry and you're happy, do you stop and think, boy, it's a good time to sing. It's a good time to praise. When we're afflicted, we remember to pray. But when we're married, do we remember to praise? Years ago, on 9-11, 2001, September 11th, 2001, I, I remember just a couple days shortly after that, the Hamilton Spectator called me, and they were calling different pastors and churches around town. And they said, hi, pastor, we're just, we're just asking, taking a kind of a survey, we're writing an article for the paper. They said, are you calling for special prayer at this hour? And I was a bit dumbfounded. I thought, if God's people don't know how to pray in a time like this, there is something desperately wrong. Why do we need to be told to pray? We don't. Yes, we have prayer meetings, and yes, we gather in times like this of affliction, in times of sickness, in times of sorrow, and we know to pray, but God's people shouldn't be told to pray. It ought to be a reflex. The Bible says that at times I'm going to afflict or allow affliction, so you know how to pray. But when you're merry, you ought to know how to praise. If you're merry, is it a reflex in your life? to give thanks. When you see something come across your way and it, it brings you joy, do you look at that and say, well, thank God. 
Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. Is it a reflex in your life to praise? Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. When we're sick, we pray. When we're afflicted, we pray. But now it takes it a step further in verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call or let him ask others to pray. Call for the elders of the church. It talks about anointing with oil there, and some people don't like that in Baptist churches. The problem I have is that the Bible says to do it. You say, have you ever done it? Yeah, I've done it. Take a little drop of olive oil, because I figure that's probably what the disciples used and Jesus used. We just anoint with oil and we'll pray over it. Some of the deacons have joined me and we've done that and we've prayed over people who are sick. But I want you to notice the onus here. The onus is on you. If you're sick, let him call. Now don't let that today, you say, well, that lets me off the hook. I don't have to pray for sick people unless they ask me. No, that's not true. We're to pray for one another. We're to bear one another's burdens. But the principle here is extended when he says, any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and they'll anoint with oil and they'll pray over him. And I, I want you to notice what, what it is trying to teach us here. It's saying, listen, you don't have to bear that burden alone. You can bear it or others can bear it for you and you can call on others to pray. L let me tell you uh, how many times I have texted people in the last few weeks and said, hey, is there anything we can do for you today? And they'll say, you have no idea how much we appreciate just people praying for us. Just pray, just pray, just pray. It's interesting how, you know, some folks, uh, Matthew Pankers put together a fundraiser and other people have, have given some money to help Daniel and Carla and we gave them some gas cards to help them, you know, as, as Carla travels a little bit and, and things like that, just trying to help them out. And uh, Daniel said to me, he says, you know, he says, he says, we don't know how to ask for things. We didn't want to ask for anything. And he says, so I told Carla, don't, don't touch that with a 10 foot pole. He says, he says, don't, don't, uh, he says, they put that on Facebook that they're raising. He says, don't, don't repost that. He says, I don't want anybody to think we're asking for anything. And he says, you know, he says, it's been such a blessing how many people have tried to help. He says, but he says, it doesn't even compare to the people praying for us. He says, oh, those, those things will help one day, and one day we'll need that, and one day we'll look and say, oh, man, I'm so glad we got that to pay the bill. But he says, the most important thing right now, he says, I can't, I'm just overwhelmed by people praying for us. You do not have to carry your burden alone. I believe that's what James is trying to teach here. Because you can pray for yourself. You can go to the throne of grace. There's no other intermediate between God and man but the man Christ Jesus. You don't, you don't have to say, Pastor, would you pray for this? But the scripture says, but I want you to ask anyway. Because it teaches us that we are a family. That we can bear one another's burdens, that we can pray for one another, that we can lift up each other before the throne of God. What a wonderful privilege. What a wonderful privilege. I mean, you remember a song by the Faithman Quartet called Unspoken Prayer. If you got some of their music, go home and listen to that song today, Unspoken Prayer. The song just talks about somebody raising their hand in the service, ah, I have a burden. I can't talk about it. Perhaps something they've been trusted with by somebody else. Perhaps something they're struggling with deep within. But just the idea that they would raise their hand among a congregation and say, would you pray for me? Proves that this verse is true. God, I, I need help and I need to have others bear my burden. I need to draw strength from my church family. I need to have others going to the throne of God. To know that we can have that ability to take somebody else's name before Christ. 
Look at verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let me put some pressure on you prayer warriors this morning. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now back up to verse 16 to see who he's talking about. Pray one for another. When you're praying for somebody else, don't you want to be sure you're right with God? You want your prayers to be heard? Now don't raise your hand. How how many of you have ever been in a conversation with somebody I mean, I, it happens all the time, to be honest with you. All, I'll get unsaved people, and you'll get talking to them. And I mean, they're living a rough life. And you'll say, well, listen, let's, let's pray or something. You'll stop, and you'll pray with them. You'll try to help them. You'll try to lead them to the Lord, whatever. And you talk to them a little bit, and you'll say, well, listen, I'll, I'll be praying for you. And they'll say, well, I'll be praying for you too. And you think, why are you praying? You don't even know the Lord we're talking to. And you wonder, does their prayer have any effect? The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Nobody is perfect. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that washes away our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and he'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a wonderful promise of scripture. We're not perfect. We can only be righteous and holy in Christ Jesus. We are to walk in the spirit that we fulfill not the less of the flesh. And boy, we, we stumble and fall all the time. But let me share with you one of my biggest fears. Standing before God one day, And he says, you remember when you were praying for that fella? And the sin that you had in your heart. Your fervent prayers availed nothing. Because the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. We need a church that has a powerful prayer life. But it starts with personal holiness. That's the hardest thing, in all honesty, to live right in our heart, and our mind, our soul, to walk like we ought to walk. The good news is you don't have to do it alone. You can be filled with the Spirit of God, and you can walk in the Spirit of God. I'm just, I'm just trying to impress upon you this morning the, the very weight, the weightiness of our prayer lives, how important it is that we are striving our best to be clean and to walk with God because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Are you right? Are you clean? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the scripture says God will not hear me. But here's some good news. Verse 17. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. So what does that mean? He's just like us. He was flesh and bone just like you. He had emotions just like you. He sinned just like you, just like me. And even though he was in this world and he had all these passions and things flowing through him, He prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit. So well then how can this man of like passions, this man who breathes the same air that I breathe and suffers the same griefs and sorrows that I suffer and has the same afflictions and the same emotions and the same sin and How can he do such mighty things? Because he walked with God. He walked with God. That's the good news. 
that you can be clean through Christ Jesus, that you can be made right. And when we're made right, we can go back to that verse, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We'll see power return to our prayer when we start walking with God. Well, that's my sermon. I I don't think I'll get to my sermon today. That's okay. But we're going to pray. We're going to pray for those afflicted. But notice what he says back in verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. Let me encourage you something. Don't run around the room today and start confessing things one to another. I don't believe that's what the scripture is saying. By the way, it says your faults, not your sins. When I confess my sins, I go to him. But the principle he is giving us here is make things right with one another. When he says confess your faults one to another, he's saying Get, make sure you're right with one another. If you're fighting and squabbling in the church, if you're hurting one another with sharp tongues and, and unkind comments and, and, and just how you treat one another, he says, Don't, you're, you're not righteous. You can't be right with God if you're not right with your brother in Christ. But if we're going to be righteous, that means we we'll also have to be right with God. And so before we pray, will we confess to God what's wrong? Will we cleanse our hearts before him? There's some folks in this room who appreciate your prayers so much. But let me tell you this, they'll appreciate them a thousand times more if they actually work. Because prayers without God's power are just words wasted to the air. But the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Because when you pray, you're talking to somebody who can actually do something about it. The God of all creation. So let's just take a moment. I'm going to encourage you to spend some time quietly in prayer by yourself. Make sure your heart's right with God. If you have a problem with somebody else in this room, just forgive it. Let it go. And when you forgive, that means you no longer hold it to anybody's account. You run into them in the hallway, you treat them like it never happened. But then get your heart right with God. Cleanse yourself of sin through his blood. And then we'll be ready to pray. And I'll come back to the pulpit in just a couple minutes. And we'll pray for these folks. Let's bow together.
Brother Tony, would you come on up and pray with us to this morning? And Brother Chris, would you come on up and pray with us this morning? Chris Weber. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Thank you, Father, for the message. Thank you that we can bow down before you. Thank you that we can make our life right with you. Thank you, Father, that you be with us in this church here. Thank you, you know, one, each other here. Thank you, Father, for our heart. Thank you, Father, that we can pray for the ones who are suffering. Thank you, Father, so much that we can praise you and we can come with a free heart before you. Father, I praise you and I love you, and uh, I want to be giving you all the blessings. Amen. Lord, you're here, right in this very room. And you know every thought, every burden, every care that we have. We're family here, Lord. And some of us are hurting. And I have a brother that's hurting, a sister that's hurting. And it matters to me, it matters to all of us. It's true, Lord, that sometimes when we're burdened, we draw closer to you and we're sorry that when the good times are here we don't praise you enough yet here we are today it's more than just a few there seems to be many and it's more than just bodies that are in need but our spirits Lord, we need to draw closer to you. I thank you for your word and the many, many promises, such as if we draw nigh to you, you'll draw nigh to us. Lord, we, we need more of you, not less. This whole world needs more of you. Oh, God, draw nigh to us. Help us to see and learn from these things that we might be a people more devoted to you than ever before. A people drawn close to you because we know that you are the sustainer of all things. A people that believe in every verse things like that you will do good to those that love you. And yes, there are things that happen to us. But we give you the praise for it to draw us all closer together. The days to come, Lord, should you tarry. And as you heal, as we already heard you're working, and we give you the praise for that. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to work on our hearts. That's the most in thing that we might as our brother said this morning, how important it is that we worship from our hearts, not just our lips, not just by show, for you see the hearts. And Lord, may our hearts be knit closer to you than ever before. I ask these things in your precious son's name, the one who intercedes for us, the one who shed his blood for us, the one who has made us righteous. In him, in Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for all that you've done for us. And we thank you, Lord, for the word of God that assures us that the prayer of faith will save the sick. But Lord, help us never to miss the conditions. That's the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man that availeth much. So God, make us clean before you. And I pray, Lord, that in the few minutes we took before that there's some that did business with you and that even during the time of 
reading the scriptures and expounding on some of those few verses this morning that the thoughts of sin were heavy upon their heart, that they laid them out before you, that you might wash them white as snow. We do thank you for that promise that you'll cleanse us, that you'll wash us, that the blood of Christ is sufficient. Lord, we do bring our petitions before you today and make them known publicly, Lord, that we pray for Daniel and we ask, Lord, that you'd heal his body, strengthen him. Thank you, Lord, that he has been doing a little better the last day or so. And Lord, uh, came through that very low time. And Lord, that uh, he testifies of your grace throughout all of it. And I pray, Lord, that whatever is in his future, Lord, that you'd go with him. And Lord, we know that uh, you've given us doctors, you've given us treatment and medicines. Uh, Lord, this is the very curse of sin in action because of Adam. Daniel's where he's at today. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, also renew him because of Christ. So Lord, I pray that you'd be with Carla, be with Elliot, Ethan, Allie. Lord, give them comfort and grace through this time. Be with Jim and Joanne. Be with all of his brothers, Lord, and so many family. I pray that you'd give them the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray that you'd be with, uh, we, we praise you today for the good news about Jessica. And Lord, we'd be remiss if we didn't lift up your holy name today. And Lord, what a relief. And we pray, Lord, that you would uh, continue with her treatment, though, Lord. Whatever needs to happen, that would happen. But we thank you, Lord, that uh, our minds always go to the worst thing. And I think even the doctor suspected the worst. But we're so thankful, Lord, for some good news. And we pray that you would help them, Lord, to look back upon this as a time of your mercy and grace. Do you pray for Brother Jimmy today? Lord, he's been battling this infection for quite some time now. And Lord, I pray that you would heal his body, strengthen him, help him, Lord. Give him grace uh, day by day. Thank you, Lord, for his wife. And I'm thankful that Brother Roberts and Laura Lee are there to be a help and an encouragement. We pray, Lord, that you'd use them as instruments of your grace. We pray for Joanne today, Lord. Each day we pray, Lord, that you'd heal her. Lord, we know that uh, she's battled cancer off and on for years. And, Lord, it, it rears its ugly head once in a while. And, but, Lord, we, we know that you have a name above all names. You've put all things under your feet. And cancer is just another thing that's named. It's just another thing under your feet. And so we pray that you'd heal in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we do pray for Linda today. Lord, she's in need of treatment. They won't treat her until they get this MRI. And Lord, I pray that you would just preserve her and help her, Lord, to have strength to get to that appointment and help her, Lord, to find what's, what's needed, Lord, that the, they might be able to help her. In the meantime, we pray that the great physician would touch her and strengthen her, give her grace and mercy. And again, we pray that you give Art grace. Thank you for Gerald and Sarah being there to help. We pray that you'd help them and give them wisdom to know what to do at times. And Lord, sometimes it's so difficult to even know what to do next. So I pray that you'd give them grace as well as they look to you. We pray for Amy today, expecting this little one day late. And uh, Lord, anxious to meet their new little one. But I pray that you'd give her a good delivery. Probably this week sometime we'll hear the news of another child being born. And we pray that you bless that child that they might be saved at a young age. And, but give her grace during the delivery process, Lord, and uh, be with Mike and the family and as they welcome this new child and grandchild into their home. So, Father, we thank you for all these things and how good you've been to us. And I, I know there's other requests, and I, I don't mean to make light of anybody. Uh, Lord, these are just ones pressing on our hearts daily right now, and I pray that you would uh, show your love to each one. Just remind them that you're there and that you're all-powerful, almighty God, and Lord, maybe we can learn, Lord, though we are not in that hospital bed or wherever somebody might be, we can learn from them when they say, let's just look for something to thank God for today. Let's, let's look at all the things God is doing to, to help me through this time. And so, Lord, may we be thankful and praise you for all those things as well. So, Father, bless our afternoon. I pray that folks would spend it time in prayer and spend time with you, get some rest that they need, and just rest in you today. And, Lord, we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for, I don't know what to call it, just allowing me to go off kind of my own thing today a little bit different than usual. It ought to be a house of prayer. 
That's what God said. That's what Jesus said. It should be a house of prayer. And so I hope that's a help to us today that we would go to God. Uh, today is Micah's last Sunday with us. He came up for just a few weeks. Young man from West Coast Baptist College. He graduates in May and uh, trying to determine the will of God for his life. I thought for sure when he got that snow and those minus 10 temperatures, that would determine the call of God on his life, but it didn't. And so he feels more strongly now the Lord would have him come to Canada and serve. And so we praise the Lord for that. So you encourage him. He's going to be here tonight preaching the word of God, all right? And his exhortations have already been a blessing to me. And so I'm looking forward to hearing what he preaches tonight. And so you'll be here tonight at 5 o'clock, our business meeting right after that, just for a few moments. And then we'll have some chili together over in the gymnasium. And the young people, I'll be working hard to have that ready for you uh, as soon as our meeting is over. Okay? Well, let's, 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 let's sing a chorus and we'll be dismissed. Let's stand together. We've already prayed. Let's sing, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer, he answers prayer, he's so good to me. I love him so, I love him so, I love him so, I love him so, he's so We'll see you tonight.